optimistic when you talk to us uh, back, I think, in March after being traded here. But to be on the field in the OTAs, even with the non-contact jersey, uh, how, how's things going and how good does it feel to be on the field right now? It uh, feels good to be uh, just out there with the guys, uh, learning this offense, be out there and, and just build some chemistry with, with Ryan, um, our other receivers, and really just, just everybody in our huddle. But it uh, feels good just to be back playing football again, I guess easing back into it. But um, it just feels good to be on the grass and just, just be out, being out there with the guys. Chris Bray was just talking about how you know you have the choice, first of all, to be here for OTAs, and then second of all, to, to rehab here as opposed to anywhere else. What, what made you rehab here and also choose to be here for, for OTAs too? Uh, just getting acclimated uh, kind of goes hand in hand. If I'm going to be here, I might as well you know just be out here. Um, so being able to get with Todd, uh, who was able to just be one of, the, one of the top trainers in the NFL and being able to get me on track. Uh, and, and where I need to be, being able to rehab with Caleb, uh, another guy who's rehabbing his ACL, and just being able to push each other and stuff like that. But uh, being able to, like I said, it's my first year with the team, being able to pick up this offense as, as fast as I can um, since I'm not being able to be out there fully. Um, so when I am ready to go, I'm, I'm ready to have that knowledge of the, of the offense and just uh, just – be able to go full speed by then. What's it, like mentally, what's it like mentally, maybe when you're coming back from an ACL, building confidence, and where do you feel like you are from a confidence standpoint, like making cuts, doing things where you're feeling like, hey, this is this is feeling good. Uh, you gotta try. I feel like you gotta you gotta do it to uh, to have that confidence, and I feel like we're able to do these things at, at at slower speeds and being able to build up as I go, and I, I think that's the, the, the really the start of it, being able to do these things in in a jog through period. Uh, in the individual period with Rob, um, I feel like that's the kind of stuff that allows me to have confidence and being able to pick it up. And as we get to go full speed, as I already made these cuts at a certain level, and as we start picking up the speeds, I feel like uh, it, it just comes from being able to do the drills and, and then translate it to the field. Have you had much of a chance to talk with Traylon, to work with Traylon? And what are your impressions of where he is as he's kind of Seemingly had a, a difficult time getting started. Yeah, I would say, uh, I mean, it's, it's the NFL. This is the, the highest level of uh, football. It's not going to be easy for any rookie um, to just pick up, especially this offense um, that we run. It's, uh, it's a lot of learning, a lot of studying, and that's what, that's what I tell you. you know, make sure you just stay in your book, um, play fast. So you, you're going to make mistakes as long as you make them full speed. Um, we, just, we just need you going, and I think right now, He's uh he's always being quizzed, you know, by Rob Moore, uh, TD, Coach Braves, uh, always throwing out questions, picking his brain. So he always uh, he's always kind of always on the on the hot seat, and in the hot spot when uh when the questions come out. But that's that's what every rookie, everybody's going to be challenged, and we're just doing that so he can pick up his offense as fast as he can. But a uh, great player, great athlete, uh, gonna need a lot from him this season. Going back to the rehabbing with Caleb, what's that like? Um, what's the dynamic like with a guy that's kind of just coming out of college football and, and a guy that's a veteran? Yeah, really good. Uh, I'll say he's a, a top corner, elite corner, being able to train with him. Uh, he's strong, he's fast, and I think that's really good for me to to have someone next to me and, and kind of gauge off of that. But uh, really, I think just just an elite, elite, elite player. And uh, I guess with my me being a veteran, being able to just – we really just we just talk a lot. I mean, we 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 rehabbing obviously, but being able to just pick each other's brains of 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 why I do a certain release or what does he prefer as a corner and press? What's what's the range? But like really just being able to get reps, being on the side and and being off the field. But uh, just uh, it, it goes hand in hand. I'm learning from him. He learning from me. Say again. Caleb's a guy who's been hurt a lot recently. What have you seen from his mindset? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think he he believes he's like been hurt. Obviously, injuries are a part of the game. It's a hundred percent of every player is going to get hurt playing football. But uh, he he's confident uh, in his ability, trusting his trusting his body, knowing what he can and can't do. And I think that's the biggest thing of, of being an NFL player is you're not trying to be somebody else. You got to learn to be your best self. And I think Caleb is a uh, he's learning that and being able to prepare like that, being able to trust his speed, trust his power, and. Uh, Really just, he's a confident player. I think he just got to be able to get out here on the grass and, 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 and be able to do it. I think he has the, the confidence to be a lockdown corner. A lot of communication, Ryan Tannehill-wise, with you guys uh, after the plays. Is that something 
that's unique to what you've seen? And also, how is that development process, you know, getting that chemistry, that, that synergy with them going? Yeah, I'll say uh, Ryan is a, a really good leader, being able to not only talk out here on the football field, but talk in the meeting room, uh, talk in between plays. I think that's one of the biggest thing uh, you expect from a quarterback and a leader is uh, there's there's no time off, really. He's always leading. Um, he's, I don't want to say interrupting uh, coaches in a meeting, but he's throwing in his two cents and what he expects from the receiver and where he wants us to be and uh, kind of what he sees and how he wants to throw the ball. So I think, like, really just being able to pick, pick his brain and being able to have that conversation uh, in between plays, in between reps, in between meetings, in between walking to a different meeting, I think that's really good uh, from your quarterback because the more you know uh, about him, the more you know what he's thinking, I think we're able to play fast and, and have that anticipation out there on the field. Robert, beyond since the, beyond, the, beyond the trainers giving you their advice and all, a lot of guys who've had an ACL injury will consult with fellow players who've been through the same process and all. Is there anybody that you've kind of picked their brain and kind of asked them what the rehab process has been like as you go through it? Uh, not as of now. I feel like early on um, in my rehab, uh, I did more so like uh, kind of just getting to know it. It was like I never had a, a, a serious injury. Uh, so this is like my first my first one. So really like when it first happened, I was picking uh, Odell's brain, Cooper Cup's brain, those who had uh, experiences with ACLs. But I think now at this point where I'm kind of along or in, in my recovery is more so about, um, I guess, me and my trainers getting back to my, my top shape. Um, and even with Todd, it's just like, obviously we want to do everything that's correct and uh, make sure no injuries come back. But now it's more so let's get back to an elite level of playing. I know it's all still new to you. You have a sense of Coach Tim Kelly yet? Yeah, uh, big time. Uh, even just with, with him and Brandon Cooks, I got word from Brandon Cooks when he was in Houston, talking about he was a great coach in the, in the passing game, being able to have him out here when we're doing drills and, and phase one, uh, being able to pick his brain and talk about a lot of our route concepts and passing concepts. And then uh, even just hearing him speak in the meeting rooms, um, being able to have that uh, experience um, is, is really big for uh, myself and uh, and Hooper at the tight end position, being able to play fast and be able to attack zones uh, in the passing game. Since AJ was sorry. sorry, since AJ was traded, have you looked at your role coming into this team differently, or have you maybe kind of approached it the same way? How have you kind of looked at that? Uh, approached it the same way. I came in uh, uh, attacking, attacking the, the, this offense and this team, trying to be. Um, the most dominant receiver. Uh, obviously, I'm always competing, um, as as every player should. Um, we we have to compete and be at a high level. My my competition was AJ. He got traded. Uh, now my competition is is, uh, is Traylon and all these other receivers. But we need to compete. And I know I'm a veteran and he's a rookie. But it's like I need him to compete with me so I could you know better myself and everybody. That's how you really become. Good. It's a competition uh, all around in every position, and that's how you keep guys playing at an elite level. You don't want guys to get complacent and comfortable. So I think. When you talked at the Super Bowl uh, last year, Robert, I know you said uh, you figured you'd be ready for for mini camp. Uh, was that just talking optimistically uh, at the time, or did you really suspect that would be the case? And and uh, do you have you impressed yourself with how things, how quickly things have progressed here? Yeah, I'm not sure if I said mini camp, but uh, <laughs> it was mini camp. I'm sure it wasn't training camp. I'm pretty sure. It was All mini right, camp. well, <laughs> well, no timetables now that I'm here. But uh, really, <laughs> but really, um, I'm just I'm just trying to get back uh, to 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 playing at a high level, being able to be out here and do what I I am doing is uh, really impressing me. Being able to run on a side with Frank and seeing certain speeds that I'm hitting, being able to trust my, my knee and some cuts with Rob. Uh, I think I'm, I'm really good on, on pace, being able to do some training on my own um, and really just being being confident in where I'm at and being prepared and being ready. Obviously, uh, we don't know how long it's going to take or what, what could come up, but uh, I would say like right now we're, we're, we're all on pace and doing really good to be ready for a camp. Uh, but really, just just uh, just just trying to be my best me and be ready when I can and whenever they need me to be uh, on the field, uh, being able to be at my best when I'm out there.
asked early, but what, what are your early thoughts on Nashville after living in L.A. and kind of being born and raised in L.A.? Yeah, uh, Nashville's way better than I expected and I thought. Uh, I thought I was really just going to just a country town and not going to have anything, but uh, it really has a lot to offer, um, whether it's food, entertainment, uh, obviously a lot of music. Um, but really, it's just I, I'm I know I'm from LA, but I love experiencing different cultures and stuff like that. Having a different experience other than fast-paced living, LA lifestyle. Um, so I've been loving Nashville, being a, getting acclimated with it. Uh, the guys, everybody's been welcoming. Uh, not just the team, even just around in in, in the public. Who likes it better? My daughter, okay. shy. Something you always wear during practices or? Uh, no, not something I always wear. Uh, but just every now and then I just put her on. Yes. Uh, when you're out there doing what you can do, are you tempted at all to kind of push it a little bit more? Do you have to remind yourself, hey, I'm wearing a yellow jersey. I got to, you know, just stay at the same pace. I mean, what's that like for you from a mental standpoint? Yeah, I'm always uh, obviously being smart and, and what I can and do, can and can't do. But I would say I'm always going to push it and, and, and try to fill it out. Like I said, for me to get confidence, I have to do it and, and know what I can and can't do. But uh, I'm going to go out there until they tell me I can't or if I'm doing too much. But other than that, it's just being smart and, and knowing my body, know my limitations. I do have that brace on to protect me. But other than that, it's, uh, I got to experience it and feel what it's like. Well, you forgot it for the first snap. Did, did you remember or did somebody remind the, you? The yellow jersey? Yeah. Oh, I could, yeah, yeah. I, I usually do forget it for the first snap because I'm kind of switching periods. And then uh, I get a rep in and then go, go grab the yellow jersey. Got to be smart and be protected because uh, these, these guys are definitely coming after us on the defensive side.